welcome back to It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Thank you for tuning in, watching, or listening, doing it however you're doing it, where you're doing it. Uh, this is an episode. This is an episode. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be a great episode. Yes. So, uh, first of all, before we get into it, uh, as always, these episodes are sponsored by Cardsphere.com, the best place to buy, sell, and trade magic cards online. I yeah. love them. Uh, I used them just this week, in fact, and yeah, they are yeah. fantastic. Cards also, gang. <laughs> gang, gang. <laughs> uh, I plug this every once in a while, but definitely use their new drafting tool as well. They continuously are backstocking uh, like old sets. I think they're at like Modern Masters 2015 now. Dang, they're getting uh, up there. Yeah, they are continuously making improvements to it as well, hmm. uh, and just little kind of tweaks and settings that you can play with. Really, really mm -hmm. a great tool. Uh, also, uh, for the first time in quite a while uh we have a new patron to yeah. actually announce so welcome we, welcome welcome jonas sir. uh so first of all i just want to point out we really appreciate you uh donating on patreon this isn't something that we plug very often no not uh not. so uh, you must have done some digging my so friend so thank you uh, yeah uh tip of the hat not of the noggin we're actually wearing hats we can both tip our hat um but <laughs> my yeah, lady. my lady. Uh, <laughs> no, but oh, well, very, very uh, appreciative of your support. Uh, yeah, I guess sure. if anybody else wants to support us monetarily, don't feel like you have to. But yeah. there is a Patreon link down in the description. Feel yep. free. Uh, you can also just donate straight through like PayPal or something. I think we have a link on our channel. But again, no pressure. Do I don't really? like plugging that. Uh, we yeah. Have a what for? Well, we have a PayPal account just because it's, it's like for good. Various yeah, I mean that's just that what we done, do. Right. But um, we do have a little like donation link that I set up like very early on because I was very yeah. optimistic and was like maybe we'll get donations, <laughs> and we actually did. But it was like one maybe two donations I'd take which a, i mean we appreciate absolutely. don't get me wrong but like we didn't Man, I, mean, I would take like some some like bogo coupons <laughs> some Publix <laughs> yogurt coupons yeah, yeah that could be your donation to me i'm a hungry boy. i would appreciate that yeah let's do it what, whatever your generosity is is feeling at that moment um, mail it to will at he's hungry always dot and no, i don't know well, um, maybe not we don't know what that's gonna be stop typing kids <laughs> No, but um, um, yeah, if you feel like, I guess, donating or supporting, that's the way to do it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that. we do appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, Jonas. Uh, and now we can get into the episode, which is our okay. standard okay. update. Last week we did our modern update. Uh, this week we're going to do standard, I yep. guess, technically right before we have to do our random card of the day. Uh, what do you mean technically? Get us in the mood. This is the only good part of the podcast. It might be. This is probably the part that only everybody watches. <laughs> Uh, yes. All okay. Right. <laughs> well, the card is Squirrel Dealer. This is yes. from Unstable, in case you don't know. Uh, it's a 1-1 one, one for 1 green. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you ask a person outside the game, do you like squirrels? If he or she does, create a 1-1 one, one green squirrel creature token. I uh, love this card. <laughs> it's and great. the flavor text, uh, if I may. You see that sheen oh. on the fur? <laughs> the glint in the eyes? Top quality. These are the real deal. That was actually on point for the art, Heck which yeah. I know you guys can't see, uh, but just look up Squirrel Dealer and you will see exactly what we mean. It is a raccoon with a uh, coat full of squirrels. Yep. So. Uh, this is actually a really good one drop, actually. I mean, it's fine, right? Like, it's... I think it's great. It's, I mean, it's a two for one. If yeah, you want to talk I think... about the um, uh, applications of an uncard. <laughs> well, okay, quick. that's fair. <laughs> but no, honestly, it is fine. I mean, yeah. if this... Take the, the humor off of it. If this was just in any set, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. Pay one, create two one one tokens. Like And most of the time people like squirrels, so you're good. Do they though? I don't mind squirrels. See, okay. I, if somebody asked me, Do you like squirrels? I think I would say yeah. I'm not a fan of squirrels, man. Why is that? So we growing up I lived on two and a half acres. Yeah. Out in the country. Mm. <laughs> but no, really. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Two and a half acres, and we had an electric fence around a portion of our, our property. Yeah. Because uh, we had lots of doggies. And, um, Fair. you know, we wanted to keep them in bounds, yeah. not out of bounds, because we couldn't always chase them down. Yeah. Um, that sounds like way more aggressive than it is. We couldn't always catch them if they ran away. Uh, <laughs> but what the squirrels would do is dig up parts of that wire mm. planting their little acorns i suppose <laughs> and go like what's this doing here this ain't no tree part and like eat it 
they would break our electric vents. <laughs> so then my dogs would run away. So Okay, I, that's unfortunate. Squirrels, to me, are just, like, tiny anarchists. But I guess they're doing it, like, not on purpose. They're not like, ah. Yeah, it's not like they're like, ah, I'm going to screw that will. <laughs> screw those those dogs. Yeah, exactly. You like, know? I don't think they're intentionally. You, you give but, them the benefit but, of the doubt. But then again. They're just playing their nuts. But then again, couldn't they be? They might be. In a world, Rick and Morty. In a, I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> but in a world that needs instructions for toothpicks, I think anything is possible. Fair enough. That was a uh, really meta joke, and if you understand it, I love you. Anyway, uh, all that to say, Squirrel Dealer is a perfectly fine one drop. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it is good in the onset. Yeah, yeah, rodent needs. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yes, yeah, so as I mentioned already, we did modern the Modern update last week, so if you're interested in Modern, I would highly suggest checking that out, yep. but that we thought we would jump into Standard this time. Right. Uh, we do these from time to time, and yeah. it's been a little while, so it's a good think, time I to do it. I think they're beneficial for both of us and, and those Hopefully of you, you who guys. have maybe stepped away for a while want yeah. to get back into a certain format. Or, exactly. Or well, and plus there has just been a very recent uh, change yeah. to the standard it's been format. Sh- it's been shaking up a little uh, bit. Um, so uh, let's do this. First yeah. of all, uh, quick overview uh, of the deck breakdowns. Now that's sure. breaking it down between aggro, control, and combo decks. Right. The, arch- the overall archetypes. Exactly. Now I should also mention this. Uh, these statistics are coming from MTG Top 8. As uh, they usually do from As us. they usually do, yeah. Uh, and we're finding that a lot of these statistics are moving around a little bit just because there was a big shakeup. Yeah. So we'll talk a little bit more in depth Standard about those as we po- go. Or pre its big tournament of the season is kind <laughs> of a moving target, um, yep. but not as much as you, not not as much as that phrase gives it credit for. Yes. Um, so these will change a little bit, but it's not yes. going to be drastic. Uh, so here we go. Aggro sitting at a whopping 78% yeah. of the meta. Is, now That's about the highest we've ever seen, maybe? It's pretty Since high up it there. Resolves, Since it resolves. Since it resolves, it started probably. Um, it's no. not super surprising. Normally, aggro does, once a new set comes out, aggro tends to take over for a while just because it's like the easy in to the format. Sure. But I will say, I didn't really expect it to be this high. And the reason being, we already had guilds of Ravnica. Ravnica Allegiance kind of mm. pushed control, I thought. Uh, like there were a lot of really really good mid range to control decks or, or cards, excuse me, and so like I was kind of expecting a little bit more of a bump in control. Now that might change over the next few weeks, few months, whatever. But anyway, regardless, we're at seventy eight percent on aggro decks. Well, yeah, is- and I mean, well, th- think about it in this kind of uh, aspect. I guess aggro is the one tried and true win condition that you know always gets you there that's the true. person who tips more cards and does more damage wins the game usually yep um and i mean aggro decks do that the best now i mean i i i thought that this was a allegiance was a great set to to push kind of that mid-range mm-hmm. kind of archetype i don't know about control necessarily um but i do think there's enough fun stuff in this set to really make uh, mid-range decks kind of kind of shine. Agreed. And I think that aggro being an umbrella label, all of these are umbrella labels, but um, aggro as well. And I think it's the, most sim- it's the simplest one. Yeah. I digress, but... Uh, <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> even our most aggro-y aggro deck right now, or the most successful, I should say, the Golgari aggro, we'll talk about that in a moment, um, even that deck is more, wouldn't you say, like a Mid-range I would say deck. like a mid-range deck. Right. Yeah, yeah. So um, this we've talked just, about that already, yeah. technically. But yes, I agree. I think Golgari Aggro being right now the dominant deck, and again, we'll talk a little bit, as you said, in just a few minutes, yeah. but uh, it does feel more like a mid-range deck, right. not so much like an aggro deck, like we're used to, I would say. Yeah. So this, um, I mean, this aggro uh, 78% business might just be a case of, well, this deck really just swings eventually, mm-hmm. so it's an aggro deck. That's fair. You know what I'm saying? That is fair. Um, and we it is classifying a lot of the decks that we would consider probably mid-range decks under that, not just the Golgari aggro. So, yeah, I think, so. Yeah, I, I think that's a big part of it. Uh, moving on, though, we do have control at 19%. Uh, again, kind of, I, personally, I kind of expect it to be a little bit higher, but I think just on the, on the onset of Allegiance, mm-hmm. I was like, okay, well, we're getting uh, Azorius and we're getting right. Orizov like 
these seem to be good control colors. Why aren't oh, yeah. we, you know what I mean? So sure. like, I think on the onset of Allegiance, I was like, okay, this is clearly going to be a boost in control. I think after seeing, especially how Azorius kind of played out as yeah. a little bit underwhelming. Yeah. Um, I'm not, I guess I'm not as surprised as I, I, I should have initially led on, but um, it, it, I don't know. I, I'm a little disappointed being a control player. No, guess, no, but, I understand. I, um, I think I am too. Um, and we talk about a healthy staple in the format being one uh, competitively viable control deck, right? Mm -hmm. um, your blue-white control in uh, modern, your, uh, who was last season's control for sta standard? Was it also not blue white? I think it was. That's right. That's because right. Teferi. And then there was um, <laughs> there was uh, ooh 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 ooh. I win You're you. You're doing great. I win you the game after you draw me a second time, Kevin. What am oh, I? Oh, approach. That's right. Approach control decks. Yeah. Were um semi successful. Successful enough. That yeah, I mean they were like see them now and then. They were a weird deck because they were like borderline jank because approach is just kind of a janky card. Well, that, but like also thing, not is, like <laughs> right. Is they had a jank card, but they yeah. they try to get to it efficiently. Yeah. Uh, be that as it may, so there's always, or there should in a healthy format, I believe, be one competitive control deck and then some others that are just Agreed. pilotable, yeah. I suppose. Generally, um, I will say, as you're mentioning, there's like one control deck that kind of rules the control decks most of the time. Like, oh yeah, nine times out of ten, that's the way to go. I will say in other formats, I guess that's not always the case. But like, well, no, but standard. In especially. standard, it's like, okay, this is clearly the best control deck. Yeah. Anything else is like you're saying a little bit more jank yeah yeah but i mean there's i mean there's always a like a spells matter i think in return to ravnica there's this weird like is it turn and burn oh yeah deck yeah. Mm -hmm. sort of thing that wasn't necessarily <clears throat> control but it, it ran almost equivocal counter to burn yeah in some instances which was kind of kind of funky but sure 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 uh, anyway uh anyway the last little piece of this is the combo decks which mm -hmm. really is only one deck right now yeah uh, Nexus Reclamation, but mm -hmm. but that does make up three percent of the meta, which I mean, you know, good for it. Um, yes, anyway, <laughs> I mean, it's a cool deck. I will say it's just extra turns. Yeah, it's fine. I, I knew Nexus of Fate once I saw it would be played in a few yeah, places. Of course. I tried to make a deck with it, um, but it it reached real far. Yeah. Um, it was it was fine, but it wasn't like ever gonna be uh, successful. I mean, really? it's done okay, but yeah, I Nexus, agree. The, the card? Nexus of Fate? Oh, uh, the deck, I'm sorry. I'm thinking the deck. Oh, well, my deck wouldn't, but this deck is good. <laughs> um, good enough, anyway. Uh, um, okay, so top three decks right now. We already mentioned Golgari Aggro. That's mm -hmm. sitting at 15%. That is heading down, uh, and mostly that's being replaced by the Sultai Aggro. I say replaced as if there's like a huge change between the deck lists. This is Golgari right. Aggro splashing Hydro Crisis. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's pretty much what this is. Um, right. So. For good reason. Uh, well, certainly. But yeah, so that's at the top. Uh, we're going to talk a little more in detail about these decks. I just want to kind of go over the top three very quickly, all of which are aggro. Golgari Aggro, right. Boros Aggro, and then Blue Red Aggro, which is the Is It Drake's deck, right. I assume. Yes, uh, it is. And then the top creature. Drum roll. Uh, Hydro Crisis. Yes, okay, it's the so, big scary lizard <laughs> monster. Yep. I was gonna make a joke. I was gonna be like Lanor Elf, which is the second best. Um, but that's <laughs> which not would funny. also be believable, funny yeah. enough. But I, sh so. I should have said something stupid. Lightning anyway, bolt. <laughs> lightning bolt. Uh, uh, Stormcrow. <laughs> Hydro <laughs> Hydro Crisis is in a whopping thirty four percent of all decks right now. Yeah, which is for one card and one card that's not like a value spell like lightning bolt will always be, be in a majority of decks in yeah. modern stuff like uh doom blade was around for a long time like yeah, that. yeah yeah um pro was in a bunch of decks like that like cards that make sense to play to make your deck more efficient mm -hmm. than at your curve like or just efficient removal like fatal push stuff like that it makes sense yeah but for a creature to be up here yeah like that's that's pretty crazy. I mean, we'll talk. That's the that's the most played creature. Is that right? Yeah, we that's the some... most played creature. Negate is technically the top played spell overall. There but, we go. Like and, that's that's my example. Yeah, there yeah. Is Negate is in almost half the decks. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, seventy two percent Dominance. of all decks. I don't even know what that means. I'd say <laughs> yeah, way more than half. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, then followed by things like Lava Coil and Duress, which yeah. obviously again efficient stuff. Although Hydro Grace is sitting at number the fourth top played card in all of standard right now not 
I mean, let's, let's check a stick out. That's pretty good. Lanoir Elves is at number five, though. So Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, so... But let's... I mean, why, Kev? Why is Hydroid Crisis so... Because it's just value. I mean, that's all that this card is. Like, it's scalable value, Yeah. which is great. It's It represents a threat. It represents card advantage, mm. theoretically. It represents sure. life gain. Uh, like, it just... It does so much. It's it's yeah. almost a simple card. Like if yeah, it makes you know sure. what I mean. Like it's just a flying trampling beater. Yeah. But then it also has this tacked on effect of I also will draw you a few mm-hmm. cards and mm-hmm. gain you some life. And it's like okay, well. <laughs> yeah. Because when I first saw it, when it was cutting the the life and the cards that you draw, it was cutting X in half. So I was like, okay, well that's still good, but it's sure. not like oh my gosh, amazing. You know what I mean? Right. Like, if it was still just draw X cards and then gain X life, like, that's stupid. <laughs> like That's ridiculous. Beyond ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. And because they cut it in half, I was like, oh, okay, well, it's cut in half. It's not that big of a deal. Um, and I see this all the time, by the way. A lot of people think that the uh, the number of counters it gets is also cut in half. It is not. Right, because uh, that's a separate line on the card. Exactly. The only reason I'm throwing this in there uh, as a little tidbit of information is because I've seen it on our Instagram page a couple times where mm-hmm. people were thinking that was the case. Uh, right. I just wanted to clarify <laughs> that is not. Uh, it does get whatever X is, it gets that number of counters. Yeah, so. like any other Hydra. Exactly. Uh, well, but it is just hydras, yeah, but. most other hydras. But it is just straight up value, like yeah. I, and we've got such good fixing in standard right now with all the shocklands and things like that. Like yeah. it's easy to splash. It's not like it's mm-hmm. three green and a blue. You know what? I mean? Like it's not something weird. It's right. like it's green and blue, and then whatever else you want. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, what I love about this card is because it scales, uh, and because it nets you card advantage in yeah. theory. Um, there is never well, there are few bad times to play this card. Yeah. Um, it at its <laughs> worst is just like, I mean, it'll dig you out of out of some sort of scenario. But at mm-hmm. its best, it's just win more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, and do it handily. We talked yeah. way in the beginning about a card that would just push the nail in the coffin. This is that card that does that for the Ooh, decks it fits yeah. in. Um, going into well, you can't even say it's in Golgari anymore, uh, <laughs> but the Sultai <laughs> aggro, we'll call it. <clears throat> We'll just fill its board with all these efficient threats. Plop a flying trampler down, refill its hand, <laughs> gain its life, swinging it so far out of comeback yeah. potential. Uh, even if you manage to remove it, that's the removal you wasted on this card. I say mm-hmm. wasted. You took this card out, their board is still as efficient as it's ever been. Yep. And you're still just as dead. Uh, so this card is <sighs> just great. There's no downside. So, Will, really I do ever. have a question about this card. Uh, and we throwing. may have already talked about this. I'm not 100% sure. Okay. But it, how much do you have to pay into X to make this card, like, good? Like, really just a solid drop? Just a solid drop? Well, I mean, that it kind of depends on my board state. If I think it's just, like, a solid play. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. Because here's the difference in my mind. Yeah, yeah. You can put... You can put four mana into this, right? Right. The green, the blue, and then two for it's X. two life, two cards. T- uh, no, it's one life and one card. If you put four in the X, you have to. No, two into X. Oh, green, two into blue, X. and you, then two into X. So if you pay four total. Pay four total. Sorry, I thought you said pay four If you to pay X. four total, it replaces itself, you gain a life, and then you right. have a two-two flying trampler. That doesn't seem very good. No, it doesn't seem very good. It replaces right. itself, which That's seems like fine. the highest upside in that scenario uh-huh. but that seems kind of bad which means you have to put at least um, six mana into this total to gain a little bit of card advantage hmm. and get a four four flying trampler which at that point i think is worth it but yeah. that means first five turns of the well not five turns of the game most time they have land or elves so it's going to be ramped out but sure. like if you can't if you can't get to that six mana threshold is it even really good you know what I'm saying? Like, that's my thing. I hear you. I mean, I hear you. Um, <clears throat> I know I'm I questioning I the, like, fine. god of all creatures in standard right now. Sorry about it. No, no. I think... I we think, do the hard-hitting questions <laughs> here on it. Results. No, but honestly, is <laughs> is there a point where this card's not worth it? I think, yeah. I think this card, though, isn't played that often. Mm-hmm. I think it just can be. That's fair. Um, I think any time before turn four and the decks it fits in re- mm-hmm. realistically speaking that's turn three for other decks mm-hmm. right um 
I think any time before that, it's just a fine play mm -hmm. because it replaces itself. So, like, if I absolutely have to have a body on the field, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I can play it and feel all right. Obviously, I want to hold it. Yeah. Wait till that big, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? Um, but I think that tipping point is so steep once you put four into X. I think you so, too. I, mean? I think there's a big difference between putting four yeah. total mana into this and then six. I'm up a card. Uh, I've got a 4-4 four, four flyer. Yeah. That's pretty good. And Trampler, worth noting. Sure, absolutely. Um, I think at that point, it's just stupid upside. Yeah. Then we can talk about, shoot, I don't know, putting 8 in there. I mean, if you can right? do it, do it. That, at that point, you should just win the game. Right. Like, Well, I mean, putting 6 into X, so 8 total. Yeah, but yeah, like 8 total. 3 cards, 3 life, 6-6. Yeah. Six, six, that seems pretty good. That's pretty dumb. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's sort of like not good in the very beginning and then all of a sudden it gets amazing <laughs> you know what I mean? like yeah, that's kind of how a very I feel like about sharp curve sharp up. curve um but no i do think it's good because it like a two two flyer for four that draws you a card <laughs> isn't unheard of yeah you know what i mean that's true like i think there's a common like that in just about well not just about every set but a, a few sets yeah, yeah right yeah. uh the fact that it gains you life is on in constant, it doesn't matter. But life gain is not that big of a deal, guys. No, Sorry not really. It. But I, I will say though, in this meta, with all the aggro decks, it makes sense. With the aggro, with the burn, that it's could, worth noting. Know, that's fine. Mm -hmm. It's more important than it would be in a few seasons ago. Mm -hmm. Sure, whatever. So, sure, short, a standard. Long for answer instance. to a short question. <laughs> um, I think it's fine in the early game. You want to save it because this is your bomb. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, it, interesting. Any, I was just wondering. Any card with X is really like you have to look at. I think every turn how viable it is. Exactly. Exactly. You know? No, I think what, you're right. What I will say is there <clears throat> are turns where this is a bad play. Right? Oh yeah. Where like turn five. You know what yeah. I mean? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you're not you're gonna leave an extra open mana. Like, like you don't want to be paying an odd number into this or leaving an open mana. Right, because it just doesn't, It sure it gets one more counter, but. It's like, that, yeah, it's that, not really worth it. A, a next turn represents I think one at that point you're card. like, efficiently you want to be putting even mana into this. Yeah, to I be think as efficient as possible. There are instances that you should try and avoid uh, where like if you're against a board state where you just have to have like one extra power to be able to tip that over you know what I mean mm. like and you're on that odd turn if that's the difference between you winning the game and losing the game do it but well of course that's if it's the right play it's the right there play. are corner yeah. cases for everything yeah. so like oftentimes you should try and wait to be able to put even mana into this I would think yeah um, likewise, that being said likewise. I'm not a standard player so well for now, uh, but <laughs> actually, this standard, the Sultai deck makes me want to play standard. I do like the Sultai deck a lot. Um, um, yeah. So I, th I think that you know the flaws in this card are I, you have to reach to find them, in my opinion. Yeah. Just because it it is such a big threat and represents so much value. I agree. Um, um, and card. this really good is card. the headliner for this Sultai deck. A lot of the deck is very similar to the standard Golgari aggro deck that we mm -hmm. have already seen. So we're not going to go over the deck list in, in its entirety. This is the biggest change. Yeah. Um, that being said, there has been another deck that has popped up solely because it's real good against this. Uh, <laughs> well, not solely because, but uh, the Takatli Honor Guard yes. is a flagship card for the White Weenie deck that we are seeing. And it's quite good against this standard environment. Yeah, so what's awesome about this Honor Guard is it works against a multitude of decks, right? Yep. Um, against, uh, I mean, they're practically the same deck, but the Golgari and the Sulta aggro deck, it works mm -hmm. great against. Uh, it works great against the red-white aggro that we see. Uh, yep. Not so much against your uh, blue-red aggro. Yeah, the Is It Drake stuff. Right, that, it doesn't really just touch to, that. Just to clarify for anybody who might not know, this is a 1-3 for one and a white. Uh, and it, when it uh, creatures entering the battlefield do not cause abilities to trigger, so right. this turns off the crisis. It turns off right. any jade light rangers, any explorer triggers, anything yeah. like that. Any this just shuts it triggers. down. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. So this uh, really hurts a lot of the cards in allegiance. Yeah, uh, which is great if you're looking to build a control deck against uh, this season, I'm pretty sure you just put a play set of these in. I think so. Just based purely on the meta season, or the meta's, yeah. the meta seasoning, we'll say the flavors <laughs> in the meta. The flavor, the cilantro. The flavors. Uh, <laughs> the flavors. <laughs> but yeah, be that as it may, um, this is a card that 
you know, they've got to get rid of. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which is great. Absolutely. Uh, putting a must answer on the field is awesome. Mm-hmm. And it's not legendary, so... You can. I would feel it's so it's so important. I would feel good about putting two out there. Oh yeah. Because there's not there are some sweepers in, but none of the aggro decks are running sweepers really. Yeah. Um. There's a few. There's like your uh, deafening clarion in um, uh, blue red. Sorry, red white. That one. Colors are hard. Uh, <laughs> but be that as it may. Uh, yeah. I think I, I think you can safely run two out at a time yeah yeah, yeah, um, yeah. because that is going to get you around a lot of just tacked on burn spells things definitely because like so. right, this is just a one three like it dies to everything it dies to a lot right uh that being said with things like banalish marshall uh in that uh, white true, weenie true, deck true, 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 um true. it does get a quick boost now i will say even if there's only one banalish marshall out uh it still can die to things like lava coil which is one of the most popular burn spells right now yeah uh but uh it is still gonna hopefully get it out of range of some of the uh the the random burn spells that we'd see so that's just an idea uh a lot of these though we're actually seeing in funny enough sideboard uh well yeah the because list. i mean it's not good against everything so it makes sense right. and there like, are it, it, it does nambo with some of your cards right that's true but be that as it may i think it's still a strong strong piece though well yeah and i think <clears throat> in the instance that you find it uh, or find that you're going up against one of these Sultai, Golgari, Aggro decks, what have mm-hmm. you. Uh, I think you sided in, and you are now just pumping out little dudes, mm-hmm. and they their value is hamstringed. Oh, yeah. Right? Whereas you can just pump the board and kind of trade off in a lot of places you normally couldn't yep. or wouldn't be able to. Their expensive cards now are worth one or two of your cheap guys, yep. which is nice. That's fair. <clears throat> um all right, so let's move on to the second de- best uh, deck in standard, theoretically, right now, uh, which is, uh, I believe, uh, Boros Aggro. Yes. Uh, nope, which that's not the right one. You're doing great, homie. Hey, hey, hey stall, go, go stall, there. Kevin. Kevin, stall, uh, stall. Stall. Uh, that's where you keep a horse. Um, I, I don't know. I couldn't think of that's anything. That's all you got, That's Kev? all I got, dude. <laughs> that wasn't very good. Uh, so Boros Aggro is more or less what you would expect it to be. It's swinging in, doing the damage. Um, and it hasn't really... It's still very similar to the regular like Boros Angels deck, right? Like it's, uh, Yeah, pretty much. It's pretty much the same thing. A uh, bunch of little dudes that pump out little dudes, and then you put a big dude out there and do the damage. <laughs> yeah, I mean, red white, there's not a lot of exciting things to say. They no. get some really fun cards. Um, oh yeah, of course. Aurelia's exciting. Uh like I like Legion War Boss. There's it's like a mini uh what's the Goblin Com- Chief? No. Goblin Guide. Goblin Smurf. No. Goblin <laughs> Band. I hate myself for not knowing this. Go- I should know Goblin this. Warboss? No. Goblin in 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 talk amongst yourself talk about this deck i'm gonna look this up all right this is bothering me uh normally this thing this would not but this really does it's fine i mean this is there's not a lot of exciting things to talk about in this deck no unfortunately, uh, it does get some pretty good like removal in conclave tribunal uh this is a card that's just thrown around in anything that plays white nowadays i think yeah uh the convoke mechanic is still king of efficiency for white really um history of banalia is still an excellent card as well rabble master that's what Sorry. i said anyway go ahead I, I threw that in there no you didn't it was between um, uh goblin kettle maker and uh <laughs> goblin war drum beater war drum beater goblin char farter <laughs> Right. Uh, what anyway. is this podcast at this point? Anyway. Uh, so, yeah. That's just, that's just yeah, it's, it's pretty much the same thing we've been seeing. Um, yeah, every anything. card is either making itself a little twin, a little dude, or it's Healer Sock, which is just a little flying life linker. <laughs> one. I love that Healer Sock is standard viable. Bruh, it's a 1-1 one, one flyer. I will always... <laughs> find a home for 1-1 flyers. Yeah. Normally, it's in a white weenie or white aggro style deck. Yeah, yeah. There you freaking go, Kevin. You about made us not No, it was going to be either freaking or flipping. Oh, okay. Not anyway, should we talk about uh, the last deck on the top list? 
Yeah, Kev, if you remind me what it is. Uh, Blue red aggro. Yep, I knew yeah, it yeah. was. Is it Drake's? I actually forgot. Is it Drake's? Is it Drake's is <clears throat> the same deck that we've been talking about for a while, if I'm going to be honest. Pretty much. <clears throat> pretty much. Um, with the addition of the Terramander. Pteramander. No, the P is silent, probably. Pteramander. Terramander. The P, I promise you that P is, is probably silent. Whoops. Like I a pterodactyl. Suck, guys. Think about that. Like a pterodactyl. Yeah, okay, you're right. P is in pterodactyl. <laughs> that used to be my favorite thing. If we were doing the, you know, A is in apple stuff, oh, you're like yeah, P yeah. is in pneumonia. <laughs> uh, <Sure>. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, this is just Drake's pumped with a bunch of spells, and uh, that's pretty yeah. much it. Uh, um, you do still you get Enigma Drake in this, right? Yeah, you do. Um, now we also have Niv Mizzet in here, which is a sweet card. As a one of them, one more in the sideboard. This is one list. I don't think this is like the most commonly played because Maybe where not. is our? What you looking for, buddy? Where's our uh, Phoenix friend? Oh, Arclight Phoenix? Yeah. No, it doesn't get played in this. Uh, because uh, in modern, you can get faster mana, if I'm not mistaken, and cheaper spells. Whereas in this, you're reliant yeah. on things like Lava Coil and things that cost two sometimes. And Beacon well, Bolt. Opt shock spell I don't know. Pierce. This is my guess. Um, I mean, well, that's fine. I don't think you get to the three spells per turn as easily. And no, I guess that is a little bit You know bit what I mean? More, like, that's yeah. pretty intensive and standard. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Because um, a lot of your one-mana spells are, like, either burn spells or, like, dive downs. Like yeah, counter, I accept basically. it. I think, okay, well, you know what? No, that does make more sense because a lot of it in modern is, like, card draw. Yeah, it's, like, draw stuff. you into it's more like stuff. Trips, whereas yeah. we don't, we have opt, but Yay, you'd opt. have to get, like, there? two opts and a shock. And then you're like, all yeah. right, all right, fine. So I yeah, yeah. fine, fine, um, fine. That's fine. I all right, whatever. So yeah, I guess to be more focused. Yep. I like this list. I think more than the one that ran the Niv Mizzet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This has two, but it's just in the sideboard. Um, yeah, I think even in the sideboard. Yeah, personally. I think that's fine. But I do like the Terramander. I think that's a cool. One one. Yeah. Um, and this deck it makes sense, right? Yeah, it makes a lot I mean, of sense. You're gonna be wanting to cast. A bunch of these a turn. Yep. I think you, you hit that seven mark pretty early on. Right? Yeah, honestly. Turn if you're just four, opting and five. things like that, you're yeah. just you're just gonna get there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's no Definitely. way around it. Uh, um, and then every Terramander becomes a five five flyer. Right? Which is a bomb. Sounds pretty good to me. Yeah. Sounds great. Um Sir? But yeah, so uh, long story short, we are basically seeing aggro take over, which usually happens around this time. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, a little more than normal, though, I would say. Yes, um, I, I would say that. Oh, there's an Esper midrange deck. I like that. Um, I always wanted Esper to be good in the standard, but I don't think it's as good as like Sultai. It's just not. Well, it depends. Now this... I will say white weenie decks sometimes are splashing the deputy of detention. I have been seeing that every once in a while. Uh, just because it's removal on a stick. I mean, I think it's fine. Why not? That's good. You've got fixing, so just do it. You know what I mean? Absolutely, yeah. If it's two color, it's basically free. Yeah. Oh, it's not free. No splash is free, <laughs> but that's more for limited players. Um, anywho, <laughs> I kind of I kind of dig this deck as I'm looking over it. I mean, it's, it's cool, Esper but I don't think it's quite as... It's like what I kind of thought the Soul Tide deck would be because it is playing more like hand destruction removal packages versus like creature packages. You know what I mean? And uh, I was kind yeah. of expecting like Thought Erasure, for instance, which is in this deck. Like I was kind of thinking that was going to be the direction that we would see the Soul Tide deck go. How do you feel about three of these being in there? The Basilica Bell Haunt? Yeah. Um, it's a it's three four. value. So big, right? It keeps you alive against aggro. Yeah. It discards a card, so if they're. I mean, yeah. I think that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Weirdly, these like four mana flagship cards for each guild are like kind of good. Um, um, there are like there are a couple bad ones, but like I feel like the Boris one isn't great, right? I'm trying to. No, remember it's not it that does. great. The Frilled Mystic for Simic, not a bad four drop. I mean, it's basically like a harder to cast but more powerful, if I'm not mistaken. Mystic Snake. Is it Mystic Snake just a two two? Yes, and this is what like a three four or something. And doesn't Mystic Snake die? Oh no, it's not an evil. No, it's just an no, no, no. It's just center of the battlefield. It's, it's a little easier to cast though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but like I, 
I don't know. I kind of like these little flagship cards. I feel like they're they did a decent job with yeah. them. Uh, I would say. Yo, I dig this deck, bro. <laughs> I, I like that it still runs Doom Whisper because Sulta pretty much yes. abandoned Doom Whisper. Come to me, baby. <laughs> this nightmare demon. Uh, well, I feel like you can pick one or the other. You don't yeah, you that. don't really. You don't need to be a nightmare and a demon. No, I think you're just I overdoing think one it. One oftentimes follows the other. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Usually. <laughs> but you know what? It's a Doom Whisper. Are you going to pick a fight with the Doom Whisper? <laughs> no, I'm just saying. You should, like, uh, I don't know. That's almost too synergistic. You know? Well, yeah. If someone said plain white bread, you'd be like, <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Duh. There you go, wizards. Get your crap together. Although they did. Don't uh, double up on these. They these. <laughs> totally, like, hit it out of the park with our um, our our big guy, Hydroid Crisis. Oh, I'm trying to remember. Hold on. Oh, it's like, it's, uh, <laughs> what is it? A Jellyfish Hydra Beast, <laughs> which is the name of my new metal band. The Jellyfish Hydra Beast. No, it's just Jellyfish Hydra Jellyfish Beast. Jellyfish Hydra Beast, excuse me. Yeah. I'm going to make you a JHP? band shirt for that. You listen to JHP? They're can like, we just start, uh, sidebar, you guys can talk amongst yourselves. Can we just start like a clothing line where it's just metal bands that aren't actually bands, but just names yeah. that we've come up with? Like yeah. a jellyfish hydra beast, and we'll make a logo for just that. Definitely, and Can then we... just start throwing these shirts up everywhere. Yeah, as long as we have like an EP on as like the back of the shirt oh, yeah, with yeah. like four songs. All right, I'm cool. Jellyfish with that. hydra beast, um, tentacles of carnage, <laughs> um, uh, 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 let's see, hydrated hydra. All right, yes, yes. What are some other ones? Um. Amphibious Rampage. Mm -hmm. Amphibious Rampage Vehicle. Um, <laughs> and then for our fourth and final, the... the Cthulhu's Cousin. Uh, Cth yes. I'm reading HP Lovecraft right now, by the way. <laughs> I just started it. Cthulhu's a coming, and it's like a... Um, Cthulhu's a coming. I yes. like that. And it's like dark rockabilly. Like, really dark. I love it. Could you imagine, like, evil, like, metal rockabilly music? <laughs> that would be terrible. Let's make it happen. Leonard Skinner We could write that. like, Mastodon. That we would be disgusting. We can make that happen. Uh, okay, right, anyway. so here's the deal. We're back, guys. We're back. We're back. Hey, Sorry. Hey, uh, hey wake yeah, up. if you were talking, stop it. Um, okay, so we asked this with Modern. I don't know if it's a little too early to say, but do you think that Standard is in a healthy place or is heading in a healthy direction i maybe would be a better way to phrase it here's what i'll say here's what i'll say mm -hmm. um from looking around on mtg top eight we have a lot of the same decks being played however <laughs> we don't always see them winning which yes. is interesting yeah yeah uh like a lot of these you're gonna see boros Agra at the top but then one that's not in, even in the top three rakdos Agra. i'm not yeah. sure where he shakes out he is uh, way down there at two percent of the meta. Got <laughs> second place. Um, well, that's a bad example. That's another one. So <laughs> uh, but there was one where Jun won. Yeah. Right. Which is so strange to me. That is strange. Um, um, but yeah, we are seeing a variety of decks all around. There's I mean, a Bant tokens in top three. What? Yeah. So we and look, three Esper controls in this one. Is this this is an SCG open? <laughs> almost three hundred players. <laughs> what? Nexus Reclamation. Four. I'm sorry. Four Esper controls in the top eight. That's insane. Salta Agra was uh, um, number two. Yes. However, so what this says to me is players have clearly said, <laughs> I think this is going to be one of the strongest decks, and. That answer being either Golgari mm -hmm. or Sulta, I believe, because we see it trending up, and I think it's only going to go that way just because it's so similar to the yeah. Golgari. I think they're saying, I believe this is going to be the best deck. We're going to play it a lot. Yeah. And it is finding success. But it's not so uh, overwhelmingly successful that the rest of the meta can't keep up. Yeah. And I think that there's evidence there just based on these top eight lists. Why can't we need yeah. just, like decks that? we haven't even mentioned yeah no and i think you're right and i think a lot of um 
I think a lot of people knew when they saw Hydra Crisis that it was going to be a kind of takeover card. Uh, and I, so I didn't think it would take. I thought it was great. I didn't think. I it thought would it was great. clear that the Golgari aggro deck was going to end up Sultai, and people knew. Okay, I need to be able to deal with this deck, and so I think people were expecting to see it. Maybe not take over, but expecting to see it, and so they planned for it early, mm -hmm. which we don't usually see as obvious a trend. You know what I mean? Um, but either way, I do. I'm interested to see where this all shakes out um, because sure. it's certainly. I mean, Sultai is the deck that I was most excited for, and definitely the deck that I feel is very very strong in the meta. But clearly, it's not take over i mean it's it's dealt with pretty handily by a lot mm -hmm. of other decks so uh we'll see what ends up shaking out i'm hoping that we see maybe esper control do some damage in the future um yeah there's i mean a few lists going around that people mm -hmm. are playing with um I did don't... that one have kaya the previous one you were looking at why well here's the problem i have with some of these decks yeah you have how do you win in this deck um, click to fairy. It exiles a bunch of stuff. That's fun. Oh. How does this deck win, Kevin? Technically doesn't have like a win condition, does no. it? <laughs> no, it doesn't. Like literally it, like main deck, this does not have a win condition. No. I mean, yes, you can lock somebody out of a game, but they can just deck you. Yeah. Like, You're going to be drawing enough cards, you'll probably deck yourself. Yeah. Like, technically speaking, this is not going to deal with a life total. Yep. Which is... Uh, I mean... Uh, in a game where you play a best of three. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, in the sideboard, it has the Dawnbringer and things like that. But, like, in Hostage Taker, which is cool. Thief of Sanity, too, which is a good card. But, well, yeah, like... you side all those in, I guess. Because... Now do you just like bait the opponent into giving up <laughs> like i guess <laughs> like, i mean if you actually get to ult to fairy which is a big ask yeah i guess it's a big ask what are they gonna do i mean yeah they're not gonna be able to do anything but like you could just theoretically wait it out so, like, true. I mean, now this is this is interesting uh this deck was made by edgar something uh maglahas <laughs> Mag maglahas whatever uh hagen does yeah <laughs> What's interesting is, I don't know if, uh, yeah, at SCG opens, I don't think you get access to deck lists before. So they are just baiting you. Probably. That's really funny. Yeah. And kind of messed up, but really funny. But <laughs> honestly, I'm the kind, if I don't see a win con and you're just like taking stuff from me, I might not give up. I mean, I'm very adamant of the Reed Duke mentality. Make Until he it. beats you, you're you still make in. him play it. That's, like that's just what you do. Hey baby. That sounds like Tom Brady don't <laughs> do. We're that not we're like not Tom doing this. Pigskin Brady uh, don't it though. <laughs> no, but I mean I think he has the right idea because in situations like this like what's the difference between winning and losing game 1, you know yeah, what I mean? Totally. Um you go to time though. There's no way like I mean, you definitely go to time, but there genuinely is not a win condition in that in main that board. One, in that one, now, in that one, there's yeah. other ones we've got like Karn main board, yeah, uh, which is still our only win. Con. But that is a win con. True. I mean, uh, this one has Chromium, which I think is awesome in Esper Control. For yeah, Chromium. Heck in yeah, that's your win condition. I love it. That's perfect. Yeah, I think that's really sweet. Actually. Doy. Uh, this it's a one, really good control card. This one, I think, Kaya is, it's like, and the Eldest Reborn, I guess there's win cons. I don't like this, though, as mm -hmm. a one of, personally. I'm not really a huge fan of it. Put uh, two Kai's in there. Or another negate, who cares? Anyway. Regardless, uh, we are interested in seeing where Standard goes. We'll keep an eye yeah, on it. Yeah, sorry. I, did I answer it? I think it's in a healthy spot. Yeah. Uh, it could, obviously, tip away from that yeah um however that being said uh i don't really know what deck could run away with it i don't know either in the past because we're at we're at a point now where so many things are being played that hard to say i agree right yep i agree 100 percent Kev, what's uh, our final segment, sir? Our final segment is, of course, our Crack of Hacks, sponsored by our good friends Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles. Grand Slam. Their Facebook group is in the description below if you're interested in checking them out, which you should. Uh, and we are on the hunt for Shocklands. I've already got one. Uh, by the end of 
I guess this set, we're going to hopefully be able to tell who has the most and then say uh, we got to do some charitable thing. Is that what we were talking yeah, about we're doing? Yeah, we're going to give back. Um, I got Tome of the Guild Pact, which I... I'm not a fan of. I got Kai's Wrath, which I'm really a fan of. Yeah, that's a good card. Um, don't know if this replaces like your uh, Damnation and Wrath of God in Modern, but... This is one of the only sweepers with upside. That's true. So that's pretty nice. Yeah. Right. I mean, it is really sweet. Definitely harder to cast though, so probably not. But um, I think my pick <clears throat> is Galloping Lizrog. Uh, it's for five mana. You get a three three trampler, but when it enters the battlefield, you remove any number of one one counters from among creatures you control, and if you do, you put twice that many one one counters on this card. So it kind of enables you to like adapt over again if you want. And then just get a giant bomb. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm down for that. This pack isn't actually all that good, though, to be no, honest. No, mine's not either. So I've got Kai's Wrath, which is probably a good pick. I mean, it's a um, solid card, for it's, sure. It's solid, definitely. Um, but we've also got stuff like Law Mage's Binding, which I love. Oh, such a good card. Um, Kai's Wrath is excellent, mm -hmm. honestly, though, but it does... Kind of puts you into it's, that control. It's interesting because a lot of sweepers you don't normally take in limited. Yeah. Like first pick, they're excellent cards, and there's always an argument to take them. But the reason I don't is like you just destroyed board parity, and unless you've got a way to rebuild, then yeah. what do you do? Because you're kind of gambling that they don't have another answer. Mm -hmm. What I like about Kai's Wrath is that upside that, yeah, you've destroyed board parity there, but you're at a clear advantage because you've yeah. gained all the life. Um, it does make it a little more playable than your average. Right. So sweeper. I think that's probably the pick. You never wheel while Mage is binding. No. Um, <laughs> there's definitely an uh, argument for that. But uh, we need to create a new segment. Oh, really? Create a new segment. All right, story time. Let's um, do it. And it's not for every show, but when a yeah. new set comes out, yeah, yeah. Kev, it has to be Flavor Text Champs. Oh. <laughs> All right, Kev. Have I have we talked about Catacomb Crocodile? Nope. <laughs> Kevin, let's talk about Catacomb Crocodile. All right. It's a three seven. Three oh, seven. One. That's a fat butt. That is a fat she butt. She is thick. Thick. <laughs> uh, three seven for five. Uh, one black and four. That's anything terrible. you'd want. Uh, Kev, it's all flavor text. <laughs> okay. Can I do you a dramatic reading real quick? Please do. Okay. Do we need <clears> to set the mood somehow? Uh, I think you just you can just sit back and relax. Right. For I'm just gonna okay. close my eyes and enjoy. Okay, ready? All right. I encourage you all to do the same. <clears throat> and now a dramatic reading from Catacomb Crocodile. <clears throat> I am Sewer King, said Rat. I am quick and cunning, and I know every tunnel. No, I am King, said Zombie. I am cold and deadly, and no rot can harm me. Then Croc came and ate them both. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. This has been Catacomb Crocodile from Guild's uh, Allegiance Allegiance of Ravnica, whatever it is. Um, that is great. Yeah, it's wonderful. I could not stop laughing when you <laughs> just started that, by the way. Uh, someone over at Wizards is flexing. Uh, is flexing. I just want you guys to know. Oh, man. So, so good. So All right. good. Um, All right, so that's a brief look at standard. I want to say something really quick. No. We're out of time. Okay. Bye. No, yeah. go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, really quick, brief, give me one minute, Max. What are your thoughts on card quality lately? Card quality? I haven't even checked, bro. Um, I know that last set, I thought it was better. Yep. Um, let me actually, let's do a quick little, like... I haven't done any tests on this or anything, because I know a lot of people do, like, foil bend tests, things like that. Right. Um, um, I'm just I haven't looking... seen as much about it either, and this is kind of spur of the moment. It's not like I planned this, but like, right now I'm just look, like looking at the ink, the inking. Yeah, yeah. I went through some bulk the other day and found some very highly misprinted yeah. cards from like very recent sets. I will say I think oh this is great art, but I I will say I think that there's a lot of room uh, for those same mistakes. Things yeah. to look like this card could easily be. Uh, like a lot of your dark greens, purples that you see on a lot of like the black cards yep. are, I think, would be evident. Um, well, what I'm seeing is very less, uh, very much less variance when it comes to, because like if you look at Hour of Devastation, 
I pulled one nickel bolus and then another one, and they were like 100% just different color schemes. Yeah. Like, they were bad. Yeah. Like, but I'm not seeing that variance anymore, and I don't see, like, the, the quality over time seems to be okay. Not, again, I'm not I'm not officially testing this by any means, but right. um, I know some people usually do. So, I mean, it looks fine. It to looks me good to me right now. I haven't um, seen any like inking major inking mis- issues or anything. No, and either. that was my biggest problem. That and the foils, of course. Yeah, uh, foils bending is the stupid. foiling process changed a while back, which gave us our crabby foil. And I mean, a, a long time. Ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like back when, jeez, from the vault stuff was going on. I think. All the from the vault is stuff right? is terrible foiling. Yeah. Um, well, it's thicker foiling, which means the cardboard bends easier. Nice. Um, it's yeah, like a they foil. like. I mean, they released an announcement a couple years, like a year ago, something like that, that they were switching printers uh, to the like Japanese the, the new printer HP. or something. Just yeah, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, and it, I mean, it seems to be holding up. Like, it seems to be pretty good. Uh, I just, you know. I just thought I'd get your opinion. Yeah, I, I think so far it's fine. Just yep. see in a few weeks how these cards are doing. Mm-hmm. You know, we like to chuck them around. Oh, I have a story time, actually. I know I'm keeping you. I'm sorry. Wow. No, I've got a great. lot of Let's things to mention. Throw, throw it on there. Tack I'll probably out. mention this on the weekly ramble, too, uh, for anybody who doesn't make it this far. All of you. Um, your girlfriend's playing Magic. Is that it? No, oh, God, I wish. Dang it. Okay. Um, sorry, what? No, no, I can't convince her yet. Yet. It'll come. Um, she does love opening packs. For real? Yeah. That's funny. And she loves doing, because I told her I do the Crack a Pack series. Yeah, and yeah. she's like, oh, I want to do a Crack a Pack. Cool. And I'm like, okay, cool, let's do it. And so, like, I gave her, like, a practice pack. And she was like, well, this is a land creature and it's blue. And I'm like, all right, Caitlin, <laughs> you are killing she it. No stuff about stuff. Yeah. No, uh, it's, it's really words. funny. Um, she said she's going to do a ghetto crack a pack, so we'll see. What does um, that even mean? I don't know, dude. It's going to be awesome. Though. How dare she? I know. Um, anyway, I just want to mention, Will, you might not even know about this. Okay. A couple weeks ago, uh, our good friend over at Grand Slam, uh, Parker, uh, uh, actually, he works there. He's a really nice guy. He does all the Parker's magic stuff. The indomitable. He genuinely is a really good guy. I like him a lot. Um, he had some of his personal collection if i'm not mistaken i might be misquoting but all i know is that some cards were stolen by an individual who came in asking to see some cards parker went back to get the cards because they don't always have all of them out front uh and come to find out on camera thankfully they had security cameras uh present yeah and they were able to tell who it was uh and they ended up picking up this guy over at uh g2k games if i'm not mistaken yeah uh now i assume he was trying to sell the cards i might be wrong that's overstepping a little bit but generally that's how that goes what are you doing there yeah exactly um unless he was just trying to steal there too which i mean whatever good luck um but regardless i just want to point out something this is more of a psa than anything else i guess but like if you notice at your local game store anybody a little suspicious. Some shifty characters. Just some shifty characters. It is okay to go up to the store manager, whoever's on duty at the time, and just say, hey, I'm not trying to call anybody out here, but I feel like there might be something shady going on. Just be careful. Keep an eye on the security. Say something. Please say something. Because there were other people in the store, from my understanding at the time, and I don't believe anybody said anything, but probably could have prevented everything had somebody brought it up and said hey like let's do something about this you know what i'm saying yeah definitely um now granted there's a big difference between saying something to the manager and then just going out and accusing somebody of something that they may or may not have done yeah which do not overstep your boundary you want to avoid being like exactly you cannot do that but uh if you know for sure that something is going down and it is shady please, please say something to somebody because obviously this is a fun community. We don't want anybody stealing anything. Uh, Don't ever steal things. That's just stupid. Um, Yeah, I know, unfortunately, I think we all know someone who's had some of their... I had my Yu-Gi-Oh collection stolen back in the day. we have a new problem. (laughs) Oh, that was way... I mean, middle school days. I mean, we all play Yu-Gi-Oh, let's be honest. Uh, I've been playing the, like, one of the old, like, Game Boy Advance games just for fun. Ugh. So fun. No. Anyway. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. I made an Ex- Exodia deck. I don't... That's great. You could say... It just auto-wins. 
he, yeah. Just, ugh. Anyway. You um, have such a broken game. Oh, yeah, it's stupid. It's busted. I mean, there's, yeah. Fundamentally. Sorry for you, you have players out there. Trash. Well. T-R-A-S-H. <laughs> Fair enough, if you feel that way. I know so. I don't like Yu-Gi-Oh anymore. Like, I don't collect any of the cards and I'll do anything like that. Ugh. The game that I'm playing is, like, super old and it's really fun, but <sighs> it is broken. It's not, like, in it's a, not a fair game, In a really. day and age where mobile games have, have come so, so far, why am I playing a Game Boy Advance from? Like, you could say it's a classic because it's Game Boy Advance, but It's nostalgic because I owned it back in the day, and so... Do you own, like, I don't know yellow version too yeah i've played that you should probably play that again <laughs> randomized nuzlocke people let's go jesus um <laughs> help my friend <laughs> nickel bolus if you out there nicky bobo nicky bobo come blow up this fool game boy <laughs> he don't broke the game boy <laughs> He don't put that little Yu-Gi-Oh up in that game, boy. He don't broke the game. Boy. Oh my God, that's funny. Oh, uh, Will, this has gone on so long. Do you have anything else that you want to mention? Um, yeah, I'm writing a uh, letter to Nintendo. Yeah. Please send help. <laughs> my friend don't broke the game, boy. I've been playing Kingdom Hearts lately. This has been fun. <sighs> Redeemable, but I have some issues with that game. Anyway, um, I've got a few issues with that uh, game too. Anyway, anyway let's let's end it. That's for off stream, yep. sir. Guys, uh, thank you so much for watching this episode of It Resolves. We do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe, turn the little notification bell on, do all the jazz. Uh, but with that, we're going to get out of here. My name's Kevin. My name is Will. And this has been It Resolves. He done broke the game, boy. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.